Welcome everyone to our Epiphany Sunday service. Next Sunday, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus and we'll also be celebrating a virtual Holy Communion. So I invite you to take what you have, bread and a glass of wine, and come along and bring those elements to take part in the sacrament with us. Come, all people of God, to a place where our hearts are open and ready to receive God's precious gift, to a time when sharing the news of birth and hope gives us a glimpse of a bright future. Come, let us worship and praise as we celebrate a new year, new beginnings, and new hope for the world. Come into the light of Christ. A new day, a new week, the beginning of a new year, and we have come to worship. May hearts be open to all the wonders God would have us experience in this time, and when we go out from this place to serve in the world. Come, let us worship God, and let us pray. Be with us, God, as we set out on the journey of a new year. Like those who have traveled through uncharted territories in the past, give us the courage to face new challenges. Like those who have known the uncertainty of what lies ahead, give us the confidence to know that you are there to guide us. Like those who have assumed they had all the answers, even before the questions were asked, Give us the humility to be surprised by your presence and open to being upheld by your people everywhere. Give us the strength we need, the sensitivity others need from us, and the wisdom to respond in ways that nurture all of creation. This we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'll just say hello to uh, the boys and girls, and I'm going to share with you a fairly familiar story. Some wise men, also called Magi, lived in a land far from Bethlehem. They studied the night sky looking for new stars or other heavenly bodies. One night they saw a bright star in the eastern sky that they had not seen before. What could this mean? one man asked. Surely this star is the sign of a new ruler in the east. Let us go find out for ourselves, said another. Getting to the land in the east took many, many months. The wise men traveled with camels loaded with food and everything they needed for this long journey. At last they arrived in Jerusalem, where King Herod was in charge. As travelers from another land, they knew it was a good idea to check in with the king, so they went to his palace. When the wise men stood before King Herod, they asked, Where is the new king of the Jews? We saw his star in the eastern sky and have come to give him gifts. This news of a new king upset King Herod, but he didn't want the wise men to know that he was upset. So he consulted his advisors and asked them where this new king was to be born. After the advisors talked together, they told the king in Bethlehem of Judea, according to the prophet of God. King Herod returned to the wise men and cleverly found out when the star announcing the new king's birth had appeared in the sky. And then he said, Go to Bethlehem and find this little king. When you return home, stop here and tell me where he is. I want to take him gifts too. The wise men left for Bethlehem that night. 
so they could see and follow the star which would mark the place where the little king was. They finally came to the house in Bethlehem where Mary, Joseph, and the child Jesus lived. And when they went in, they found Mary with Jesus. And then the wise men unpacked the camel with the gifts for the new king. And you can see here the three wise men, the camel resting, the baby Jesus with Mary and Joseph, the shepherd, and a couple of sheep, and the cow. And so, when they went in, they found Mary with Jesus, and then the wise men unpacked the camel with the gifts for the new king, and they gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, of course, before they left Bethlehem, so the story goes, the wise men had a dream, and in it they were warned not to return to King Herod. So the wise men did not go to Jerusalem, but went home by another way. And it's a good thing they did, too, because Herod was evil and wanted to destroy the baby Jesus. And of course we know that the baby grew and lived his life as a child, as you and I would have lived. He grew up, and, of course, he was our Savior. Let us pray. God, we want to give gifts to honor the child Jesus, too. Bless our gifts and all that we give. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now hear the word of God as it comes to us from the Holy Scriptures. The scripture lesson this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Hear the word of the Lord. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
They say that the short story is probably the most popular of genres in American literature. And I would believe that quite easily because I love reading short stories. My appreciation for short stories began in high school, and I'm glad over the years to have collected many books of short stories. They're a nice break, in a way, after you've read a lengthy, thick novel. It's kind of nice after that to pick up a book of short stories. The nice thing about them is they can be read in one sitting. Such authors as Stephen King, William Faulkner, um, certainly Ernest Hemingway, Ring Lardner, all the great authors have managed to, to write short stories. In today's Gospel, we have an example of an epic story delivered basically in a single sentence. We read, They saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. This, of course, is the familiar story of the wise men from the East, which Colleen just read. They ask, where is the infant king of the Jews? We saw his star, and we have come to give him homage. Where was the infant king when the wise men found him? He was lying in a manger. Mother of all paradoxes, the king of the universe, lying in a lowly stable. Continuing the story of the wise man, Matthew tells us the star went forward and halted over the place where the child was. And here we have it, in just a few short sentences, the beginning of the greatest story ever told. In 1948, Cosmopolitan magazine published a short story called The Next Voice You Hear. And in it, the majestic voice of God is heard on the radio once a day for six days. The first divine broadcast in the story was made on Monday at precisely 9.38 p.m. on a March day when a deep, gentle, but firm voice interrupted a program saying, This is God. I am sorry, but I must interrupt you. A plan of creation ought to, by rights, go forward under its own rule. But you, dear children of the sun's third planet, are so near to destroying yourselves that I must step in and spend this week with you. And then, so the story goes, on Tuesday again at exactly 9.38 p.m., the voice spoke. Do not be afraid. I only want to convince you that I am God and that I am visiting you this week. There were plenty of skeptics, of course. A professor of logic pointed out that if it were God speaking, he wouldn't find it necessary to use the radio. But no evidence of trickery was discovered. Foreign operatives were suspected by some, but all were eventually absolved. By Wednesday evening, most churches had installed radios, and their pews were filled with expectant people. And when the voice came, it said simply, It is I. On Thursday, God presented the world with a display of modest miracles. Oranges in a Wisconsin fruit market rolled up the wall and spelled out the words, Men are my sons, and therefore brothers. A lion in Copenhagen escaped from the zoo, found some sheep in a field, and deliberately laid down with them. In California, a woman attempting suicide jumped from a bridge and remained suspended in midair for 45 minutes until rescued. Members of the Association for the advancement of atheism gathered in New York City 
for a mass protest. The Thursday night broadcast had a theological tone. Every pebble beneath your feet, every drop of water is a miracle. But since you have lost your ability to feel awe, I have had to perform today these other miracles. However, this will not convince the diehards. Hence, tomorrow, Friday, I shall perform several sizable miracles. And all military equipment was miraculously cut into scrap metal. And then came Friday's broadcast devoted to tying up loose ends. Must my visit mean that the world is coming to an end? For heaven's sake, listen to your soul. Do as it bids you. Good night. On Saturday, all the dictators of the world resigned. All the exploiters of the world changed their ways. The earth had become a friendly, pleasant place for 99% of humanity. The Lord Saturday night radio address was his last. Now I shall take my leave. You will find that most of your problems remain. You will still have pain and unhappiness. You will need to feed, clothe, and govern yourself. Need I tell you why? A planet is a school. Live, dear children, and learn. How do you suppose the people lived from then on? If God should appear in this extraordinary way to us, how would we react? Would we be like King Herod in today's Gospel lesson, plotting to undo God's initiative? Or like the Magi in today's Gospel, would we rejoice, having seen the sign of the infant King, Jesus? Falling on our knees, we give homage to Jesus, as did the wise men. But our act of homage is incomplete until we get up off our knees, and then we must return to our daily living to do the work as disciples of Christ. When God showed himself in physical form to the wise men from the East, God had given them a new lease on their inner life. Not only had they found the answer to their question, where is he who has been born King of the Jews? But also they had found the answer to the question of their own identity. Their search for meaning and purpose had brought them to their knees in that Bethlehem stable, and their hearts were filled with joy. And that's the story of our salvation, too. In and through our experience of the presence of Christ our King, we find new meaning for our life, and our hearts are filled with delight, and we fall on our knees and worship Him. In and through our experience of the presence of Christ our King, we know in our hearts that the world will be redeemed because God is in charge. In and through our experience of the presence of Christ our King, we know in our hearts that beyond our death and the death of the world, the Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter promise of eternal life will be kept. In and through the experience of the presence of Christ our King, we know in our hearts that we can rely absolutely on the continuing action of God's grace in our individual lives, in our families, in our world, in all human history. In and through the experience of the presence of Christ our King, we know in our hearts that nothing Nothing can separate us ever from the love of God. 
Anna Case Winters, in her commentary on Matthew's Gospel, writes that we are to see the direct parallels with Israel's story. Even the slaughter of the innocents, which occurs in the Gospel later, is related to Pharaoh's orders to the midwives to kill all the firstborn males at the time of Moses' birth. And like Moses, Jesus is miraculously delivered, and like Moses, he in turn will deliver his people. Matthew's quotation from Jeremiah, For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel, is an allusion to the exile. In the time when Jesus is born, things are so bleak for Israel that they are reminiscent of the exile. And even in these times, God's deliverance is at hand. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Epiphany story that invites each of us to follow that same star down to the center of our being. And there, like the Magi, we will know the true wisdom of the Christ Spirit. And there we will discover that there is neither wisdom nor life without the love of Christ. And that, my dear friends, is the heart of the greatest story ever told. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now unto him be ascribed in the church by Christ Jesus all glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power, world without end. Amen. In confidence we pray to the Lord. In our prayers of intercession, each petition will end with the words, God of wisdom, glorious light, and the response will be, hear our prayer. Let us pray. O loving God, through Christ you call us all into your covenant with Abraham and Sarah. For your church throughout the world, that it may be a faithful witness, declaring your wisdom to all authorities. God of wisdom, glorious light. Hear our prayer. The wise men came to King Herod in trust, but he betrayed their trust and perpetuated unspeakable evil. For the leaders of the government, that they reject the way of Herod and exercise their authority in truth justice and mercy god of mercy glorious light hear our prayer joseph mary and jesus fled before the wrath of herod and become refugees in egypt and for all those who suffer from political oppression injustice or war and especially for refugees god of justice glorious light hear our prayer Joseph dreamed a future for his son and obeyed your will for his family, for all families, that they may live in peace according to your will. God of peace, glorious light. Hear our prayer. The Holy Family lived with neighbors and received help from strangers. For our neighborhoods, that they may be communities of human flourishing offering kindness to strangers, God of harmony, glorious light. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, gracious God, and grant us to live as heirs of your promise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom we are bold to pray, saying, Our Lord, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the light of God's love. And may the love of Christ that shines in you shine brightly in the world wherever you go. And the blessing of God, divine giver, radiant light and fountain of life, bless you and keep you always. Amen.